That was the only season that I actually did games play-by-play -play on television in Los Angeles. The other 25 years, I, I had a total of 26 years in L.A. The other 25, I was a sports anchor reporter for one, two, three, four different television stations. I covered the Dodgers and the Angels. Not only baseball, but, but all the sports, mm -hmm. of course. A lot of uh, a lot of great years during that time. Let's, let's talk about that '88 yeah. season right now. Okay. Um, who are the players that you got to know, and, and who are some of your favorite players, and you know, some memorable moments from that season? Oh gosh, um, Kirk Gibson, of course. Of course. Who wasn't as nasty as, as he was made out to be, <laughs> as long as you would approach him properly and show respect to him and gain his confidence in you, then, then it really wasn't a problem. But he was, he was a very serious guy, no-nonsense guy, and you had to treat him that way. Mm -hmm. And once he could, knew he could take you seriously, then there wasn't a big problem with him. But Oral Hershiser, the incredible year that season, that's when he set the consecutive scoreless innings record for pitchers, uh, which still hasn't been broken. Uh, Steve Sachs was on that team. Yeah. Pedro Guerrero was on that team. Hey, what about working with uh, Lasorda? Did you do I have a very with long them? history with Lasorda. Really? A very long history. In fact, in 1967, Matt, I was playing for the Caldwell Idaho Cubs in the Pioneer League. And the manager of the Ogden Dodgers in that league was Lasorda. Now, of course, you know. Nobody knew at that time that Lasorda was going to become a Hall of Fame manager. And in fact, I remember going to Ogden for the first time when we played down there. And the manager of the Dodgers, Ogden Dodgers, Lasorda, was just a total jerk. I mean, he would scream at opposing players. He would scream at fans. Of course, he would eat umpires alive. And again, you know, I, I have to say, at, at that time, in 1967, we hated the guy. Uh, Again, not having any idea he would become the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers and go on to be in the Hall of Fame. So I got to know Tommy a lot better when I got to Los Angeles and covered him for, goodness gracious, uh, over 20 years as the skipper of, of the Dodgers. And we became good friends. And uh, I no longer hated the guy. I admired the guy. You know, he, was, he, had, a, he had a tough edge to him. But we used to call Tommy the, the, the greatest maitre d' in baseball. Because when he was on, if you came into the locker room or you came onto the field, he would treat you as if you were a guest in his home. He was a great motivator of young players. In 1981, when they beat the Yankees in the World Series, he basically had managed those players, Bill Russell, Davey Lopes, Ron Say, Steve Garvey, all those guys, he had managed them right up through Class A, Double A, Triple A, and then with the Dodgers. And that was his talent, taking young players and just motivating them to succeed. Tommy, there's, there's nobody else like the guy. He, he, he's from old school baseball, you know, uh, uh, just a lot of fun to be around. Never, ever a dull moment around that guy. The Dodgers. The Dodgers are my favorite team to cover. Okay. Uh, and that's not to slight the Angels, of course, but, <laughs> you know, in those days, the L.A. Dodgers dominated that market. Uh, the Angels have come a long way since then and have, have gained much respect. The Dodgers have been struggling for a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that time, and, and what's funny, Matt, is I grew up in Northern California hating the Dodgers, hating the Lakers. The Giants thing. Absolutely. Hating USC, hating UCLA, but when you're there for 26 years covering these guys on a daily basis, you can't help but root for them. Right. So the Dodgers were my favorite team 
in, in Los Angeles. The Lakers were second for the Lakers, Pat Riley, <laughs> Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Jamal right. Wilkes. And you, you interacted with all these guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, covered them again, virtually on a daily basis in season. Yeah. It was incredible. Right. What a gig, right? I tell you what, man. I got paid to watch games. I know. <laughs> Dodgers, Lakers. Of course, uh, the Los Angeles Rams before they uh, Raiders took off to St. Louis. The Raiders were there for a while, okay. so I covered them. Yeah. So you, you got to interact with all those. Los of Angeles Kings hockey team. Mm -hmm. the, the Mighty Ducks, I didn't get to that, know that well. Was that Gretzky's yes, time down there? Yes, uh, The great one was there for a while. That, that was my job, to be around those people all the time. So what are, what are some of the best memories you have of sports moments? 1981, when the Dodgers won the World Series. What was, well, that is probably my favorite coverage of any sporting event ever was how they, in the playoffs, they were behind, they trailed in every single series. They were trailing the Houston Astros in the first round, came back to win that series. They played Montreal for the championship, for the pennant of the National League were behind, they came back to win that series, and they were down two games to none to the Yankees. They lost the first two games in New York in the World Series, and they came back and won the next four, and they clinched uh, game six of the World Series in New York, beating the Yankees 10-4. to four. But that whole sequence covering that playoff series is, is my all-time favorite moment. Really? Covering the Olympic Games in Los Angeles in 1984 has got to be right up there. Covering the Lakers, both uh, the Showtime Lakers with Magic and Kareem being the spearheads of that team, and Pat Riley, of course, to covering uh, Kobe and uh, Shaq and Phil Jackson in the early 2000s when they completed their famous three feet. Yeah. Those, those were the top moments. Covering Oral Hershiser's record of the consecutive innings pitched, uh, consecutive shutout innings pitched. That was that was another highlight. Just so many. I mean, so many. I tell you what, out of that town, how do you pick one? It was another really favorite moment, and it was early on when I got to LA. In fact, it was uh, the 1980 Rose Bowl, USC against Ohio State, and USC was down by less than six with two minutes to go in the game, and they marched about 90 yards flawlessly for the winning touchdown, and I remember that, and, and I was a little bit giddy about that because it was my my first year in Los Angeles, and to see the, the USC Trojans do that, it was to beat Ohio State, uh, and they, they won the national championship uh, by way of, of that, and that was another great, great moment, but if I sat here and thought about it, I could probably come up with a hundred. You said the business changed a lot before you got out of it. Can you kind of give me a little... Uh, sure. Um, reporting of news became a lot more sensationalized. Ratings became all-powerful. It was hard to uh, to keep your integrity as a reporter and, and do it the way you believe was the right way. There was too much pressure to do it the corporate way for ratings, etc. And the bottom line became everything. And um, athletes changed somewhat. Their egos began to grow uh, beyond reason. Not everybody, but many of them. And it didn't become fun anymore. Um, and like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's what I did, it wasn't who I really was. So there are some guys who live and breathe sports and they know every statistic that's ever been recorded. I wasn't that guy. I loved the games. I loved the sports. I loved what the athletes were able to accomplish. It wasn't the end all to my being. There were a lot of other things that I wanted to do. And the time was right for me to leave. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I did. I have absolutely no regrets. People ask me all the time if I miss it. And the answer is no, I didn't. I did it for a very long time, 36 years. And you're satisfied. I had a blast. Uh, I have great memories. But now, you know, I have other things to enjoy. I'm, I'm really happy. I don't, I don't miss any of them.